It's Mr. Kanile once more with the topic uh, statistics. We are here, of course, in our Visual X Master classes. The last part of data handling of statistics is the part that deals with least square lines. We've got to know about least square lines, which is called the line of regression. As we say line, it has something to do with straight line. This is the important equation that we use for the least square lines. Remember, when you look at this equation, it's y bar is equal to a plus bx. It's the same as the straight line graph. Remember your straight line graph, it says y is equals to mx plus c. But you can see this one started with mx, then this will be c. So in the very same way as you treat the straight line graph, this becomes your gradient. This is the gradient, this is the y-intercept. So it means that this becomes our gradient which is M there, it's B in this section called the regression line. And A here is your y-intercept, the y-cut. Now, you treat it as you are treating the straight line graph. Another important factor that we'll be talking about here is just the plotting of points. Then we'll be talking about the correlation coefficient later on. But quickly, let us respond to this question. Use the grid provided on diagram sheet 1 to draw the scatter plot for the data. It is important that we must calculate our data. How many a training manager wants to know if there is a link between hours in training, X spent by a particular category of employee, and their productivity units produced per day on the job. The data below was extracted from the files of 10 employees. Let's read the question again. A training manager wants to know if there is a link between hours in training spent by a particular category of employee and the productivity and the productivity okay they want to check if if you train if we train you more you are going to produce more if you teach you more are you going to pass that's what we are checking in this in, the, in, 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 in this particular situation there are about 10 employees these are the hours that were trained this employee they produce 45 units that's what it says. So we're checking whether does it yield a profit to train our, our, our employees more in this particular case. Uh, let, let, us, let, us, let us do this, this the, the plotting as, as they are requiring us to do. Use the grid provided on a diagram sheet to draw a scatter plot. A scatter plot, okay, let's talk about a scatter plot. It might be in this quadrant. This is the first quadrant. This is what we call, I'm plotting this point, I'm plotting this point, I'm going to plot a number of points. I'm plotting a number of points. I'm plotting a number of points. What type of a graph is this? Of course, it is the parabola. I might have another question that will want me to spot this, this point. What graph do I get here? A straight line, a linear, a line of regression. So when we talk of this part, you'll always be getting straight line. It's either with a, a, a negative gradient or with a positive gradient. It depends on the M. Remember, if M is positive, the line will be like this, like this one. If M is negative, the line will be like that. So that's what we call a, 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 a scatter plot. It can give us any type of graph. Other spot a, sp a scatter plot can give us hyperbola or whatever. But at times, when you do the scatter plot, let's 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 do a, an, a, a particular scatter plot. This is a, a scatter plot that I'm plotting here. This is a scatter plot that I'm plot, uh, plotting here. You see, if I draw a line of best fit here, it will be a straight line. But at times you'll find one point that is going astray. Right? Right. You'll find that one point is, is staying astray. I want us to look at, to, to, to draw the, the scatter for this one. The first one is x is 16. These are the x-axis, these are the y-axis. X is 16, so 16 will be somewhere here. This is 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So 16 will be somewhere here. 16 and what? 16 and 45. So this is 40, 45 is somewhere there. So I'm just gonna draw rough sketches. This is my first point. One. Remember, I've got 10 employees, so I must have 
10 uh, coordinates there. The next one is 36 and 70. This is 35, 36, it will be somewhere here. I'm looking for 70 on the other side. 70 will be somewhere here. So this is where my point will be. So the next point. Right? Uh, the next one is 20 and 45. X is 20, Y is 45. Let me look at the first one, it was 16 and 45. 16 and 45, this one. The next one was 36 and 70, 36 and 70. The next one is 20 and 44. It is 20 and 44, just below 45. So it will be somewhere here and 20. So this is where my next point is. I've got three now, one, two, three. I'm looking for the fourth one. One, two, three, I'm number four now. 38, 38 just before 40. And what? 38 and 56. 56 will be just above 55. And 38. This is the point, All right? Uh, after 38 and 56, it will be 40 and 60. Where is my 40? This is where 40 is. This is where 60 is. The next point after 40 and 6, it's 30 and 48. 30 and 48. This is where 30 is. Where is my 48? Just below 50. That's my point. Fortunately, in the exam, you'll get the, the, the graph paper with with all those grid. Uh, after 30 and 48, uh, it is 35 and 75. 35 and 75. 75 is somewhere here and 35. All right? Uh, 22 and 60. 22, go up to 60. This is where 60 is. 22 and 60 then 40 and 63 this is where 40 is I'm looking for 63 this is 60 63 will be somewhere here right 40 and 63 24 and 38 24 and 38 24 and just before 30 before 40 so it's somewhere here Anything left? Let's check. Let's count our, our, our plots, our points that we've plotted. There must be 10 because we've got 10 employees here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then we've captured everything. What was the question? Use the grid provided on the diagram sheet to draw a scatter plot. This is what we call a scatter plot. We don't know what type of a graph is this, but I can see what type of a graph is this. Scatter plot is just plot, plotting the coordinates. It teaches us to do that. Let us look at the next uh, question. Use the least squares method to establish a linear relationship between training hours and productivity for these employees. I repeat, use the least squares method to establish the linear relationship between hours and training and product and productivity okay this is where this comes in handy in other words here use the least square method this is the least squares method to establish the linear relationship between hours and training and productivity in other words we want to find the equation of this graph in other words we're looking for a and b we're just looking for a and b now how do you find that we use a calculator. We go to our calculator and find that relationship. In other words, we're looking for the value of okay. If I have y, y is equal to mx plus c, y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, y is equal to a over x minus p plus q. Okay, let me just end on this. When you are looking for the equation for this graph, you are just looking for M and C. 
you don't touch x and y same thing here you don't touch x and y so you're just looking for a b and c even here you don't touch y and x you're just looking for a p and q that's what we do when we're looking for the equation it's exactly the same thing even here we're looking for the equation of this graph this squares this square line so you're just looking for a and B. That's exactly what you're looking for. Now, how do you find that A and B? It is very simple to use a calculator to find those values. Uh, I want us to go to our calculators, setup mode. We go to setup mode. Is it okay, La? It's on there. Good. Is it okay this side to move a foot? All right, you go to setup mode, you go to stats, which is number two in this particular case, you press two. Uh, what are we doing here? What section are we doing? Uh, we are doing the least square lines. Do you see the formula that looks like the least square lines there? Yes, it is A plus BX. Can you see A plus BX in the calculator? It is number two. You go to number two, it is A plus BX. You punch number two here, you are going to get two columns. Remember in the first one when we were looking for the X bar, we only found one column. Now we're getting two columns because we're going to enter the hours in training, which is X, and the productivity, uh, which is Y. So in the first column, we push in the X values. In the second column, we push in the Y values. It is advisable that you put all the X values first, then you go to Y values to save time. What is the first, uh, what is the hours for the first employee? It was 16, so it's 16. The next hour. The next hour was what? Was 36. Uh, 36 enter the next hour 20 20 the next hour it's 38 Five, uh, 40 after 40 what do I have Thirty, thirty-five. After thirty-five, twenty-two, forty, twenty-four. I'm going to wise now. I'm going to start from the top. From number one, which was sixteen and forty five, the next one after forty five is seventy, after seventy it's forty four, after forty four it's fifty six, after fifty six it's sixty, after sixty it's forty eight. After 48, it's 75. After 75, it's 60. After 60, it's 63. And uh, the last one is 38. All right, you always check if they are all captured. 24 and 38, yes. Uh, the next one is 40 and 63, yes. I hope I've, I've done it correct. Once you've entered that, uh, you press AC, then you go to shift, you go to stats, which is number one. What is it, what section that are we doing here? We're doing a regre regression line. Do you see anything that has to do with a regression line here or least square lines? Yes, I can see it is number number five. REG. It stands for regression line. So you go to number five. You press number five there. 
what is it that we are looking for? Remember, when we are looking for this, we are looking for A and B. You can start with any of the two. Looking for A and B. If I want to start with A, from my formula, I press A. Which one is A? It is number 1. I press 1. I give the answer. 29,22. That is my A. My A in this particular case, I write it down. My A is equal to 29,22. This is my, the value of my A. I've got A and I'm short of B. How do I go about looking for B? Remember, you don't have to on the calculator that is already on. If I want to cancel this data, I press AC. I just press AC. From there, I go back to shift. I'm looking for B now. Remember that? I'm looking for B. I'm looking for B. I go to shift number one for stats. Uh, what is it that you are doing? Doing the line of regression, REG. Do you see REG in your calculator? Yes, it is number five. You go press number five. Ah, uh, you can see the B there. What value is B? B is number two. You go and press two. Then you press equal sign. It is 0 0.886, so it's 0 0.89. So the value of B in this particular case the value of B is equal to 0, 0, 0,89. Remember, we're doing question 6.2. 6.2, therefore, the relationship Y bar is equal to, what is my A? This is my A. It is 29,22 plus, what is my B? It is 0, 0,89x. This is the relationship between the two. This is the machine that will give us uh, the linear uh, regression for this particular one. Number three, 6.3. Draw the least square line for the data on the, on the scatter plot. Draw the least square line. Draw the least square line for the data on the scatter plot. In this particular case, our least square lines will be a straight line. It will be a straight line graph. Remember, this is the equation. This is what we are sketching. Y is equal to mx plus c. So there's something that we already know there. The c. Do you see the c? It is uh, 29,22. We, we, in fact, we are drawing the, what we call the line of best fit. That line must try and cut at 29,22. This is 30, 29,22 is somewhere here. So whatever line that I'm sketching, it must try and move towards this line. So if I'm, get, if I'm sketching it, it should come towards this value here. So let's do it, let's do it. You draw the line of best fit between these lines. Oops. I will sketch it in this way. This is the line of best fit. But be careful here. You draw you, the line of best fit, you draw the line only within the points. I don't have to show this line here because there are no points. But this is helping me to get the so-called accurate line. It should pass to 20. Even though I will not draw a line that will pass here. But this guides me. If I put a ruler here and draw this line, it should be exactly the same. You, I, I'm not supposed to draw a line beyond this uh, plot, these plotted points. But I know that it should have gone towards 29. Hence, this line is very important. It's called the line of best fit or the line of regression which is given by y is equals to 29,22 plus 0 0,86 the gradient is positive for this one let's look at the next question there we're doing 6.3 now we're going to 6.4 what is the question saying estimate the productivity level for a particular employee who has received only 22 hours of training doing 6.4 okay estimate the productivity level okay we've got uh, <laughs> productivity and hours in training what is productivity it is y what is hours in training it is x you can 
see here y is productivity the question says estimate the productivity level in other words we are looking for y here remember what is it that we are given estimate the product level for a particular employee who has received only 22 hours in training what is 22 hours in training it is x hours in training is x we are looking for y let's do that we are looking for y we are given x so it's going to be 29,22 plus 0 0,89 into x what x are we given what hours of training are we given we're given to as 22 hours of training so that is x you push it in here 22 you calculate this it will give you the answer uh, let's quickly work on it uh, it is 29,22 plus 0 comma okay plus zero comma eight nine into twenty two hours in training forty eight comma eight y is forty eight comma eight right that is our the value of our y let's move on to six point five let's look at six point five we're about to finish 6.5 determine the correlation between productivity and hours of training determine the correlation between productivity and hours of training correlation we call it the correlation co coefficient it is given by the symbol r in other words this is what we are looking for we're looking for uh, is there a relationship between hours in training and productivity? We are just looking for that. Do we have a relationship between hours in training and productivity? How do you calculate that? You also use a calculator. Uh, you go to shift, because the data is already here. Shift, then you go to number one. What are we doing? We are doing line of regression which is 5 in this particular case, 5. What is it they were looking for? We are looking for a correlation coefficient, which is given, denoted by R. Do I have R here in the calculator? Yes, you do have R, which is number 3. You press 3, then equal sign. What is the answer? It's 0, 0,66. So the correlation coefficient in this particular case, it is 0, 0,66. You go to your answer to your question to, to your to your paper, you write R is 0, 0,66. This is the correlation coefficient. Three marks just for punching the calculator. 0, 0,66. The last question. Last question 6.6. .6. Is the association strong? Advise the manager. Is the is the relationship strong? between hours in training and productivity. Now, this is use this scale in the exam, just in case this comes out in the exam. Uh, I, I suggest you look at the scale. Uh, let's talk about positive correlation. This is zero. This side is positive correlation. This one, will, this side will be negative co correlation. This side is positive correlation. This is zero, this is one, all right? Uh, this is half, half will be here, 0, 0,5, all right? Uh, 0, 0,1, 0, 0,2, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all right? This is 0, 0,1, 0, 0,2, 0, 0,3, 0, 0,4, 0, 0,5, 0, 0,6, 0, 0,7, 0, 0,8, 0, 0,9. Remember what did you get as our solution in this particular case? We got 0, 0,66. Now the question is, when you get 0, 0,66 as your correlation coefficient, is the relationship between hours and training and productivity strong? How do you tell? Now watch here. 
if the solution that we are getting as the correlating coefficient it's between 0 0,1 and 0, 0,2 if it's either 0, 0,1 and 0, 0,2 we say the relationship is very weak right so it means it's very weak Tra putting more hours in training does not necessarily yields more pro productivity in this particular company if the correlation coefficient r is 0, 0,3 and 0, 0,4 it is weak If it is 0 0.5, it is moderate. If it is 0 0.6 and 0 0.7, it is strong. If it's 0 0.8, 0 0.9, it is very strong. This will assist you into getting the whether the relationship is strong or otherwise. Now, what we got was 0 0.6. This is positive strong relationship if it, it's this one if the answer was negative something negative 0 0.1 negative 0 0.2 the same thing will go to the side but in a negative form now the, the answer is of 6.6 .6. is the association strong I advise the manager now we've got r as being 0 0.66 which is somewhere here which is strong so this is a strong correlation coefficient so there is a relationship between hours and training and productivity this is what it actually means now how can you advise the manager for this particular company because you've calculated and you've seen that there is a strong relationship between hours of training and productivity now the only way to advise the manager when the relationship is strong is to tell the, 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 the manager to increase hours in training so that the productivity will increase thank you